here I'll show you how to make a countdown timer in Excel. It's pretty cool and I'm going to show you how to add three functions to it. One that will start the timer like that. One where we can stop the timer whenever we want. And one where we can reset the timer. I'll show you how to set up the worksheet, how to add all these buttons, and then how to add the code that makes all of this function. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So first thing, let's go to a new worksheet. I'm going to show you how to create what we see here. It's pretty darn easy to do. So here we have a blank worksheet. And really the first thing you want to do, find where you want the timer to run and then just go to that cell right click go to format cells and what we're going to do is we're going to choose a format that will make it appear in minutes and seconds so you can have it appear however you want we're going to go down to custom and then over here we have a lot of options go down right here so you could have it do hours minutes and seconds hours and minutes we're going to do minutes and seconds. And now once you have it done like that, we could actually just input some time here. So we could do 00, zero colon 05 colon 00. And we have five minutes in the cell. Now notice when we have the cell selected in the formula bar, you're going to see 12.05 AM. That doesn't really matter in this case because this time is just used to show the user how much time they have left. So we're not worried about how Excel actually interprets this because if we select the cell and go to the home tab and change the formatting from custom to general, you're going to see a really goofy little thing right here. And that's how Excel stores time. Time is stored as a decimal. So if you're working with this and you see that and it confuses you, just know that you need to set it to a date time format and you'll get back your lovely little presentation like this. And once you have your format or once you have your worksheet completely done, you can go ahead and hide the formula bar so the user never sees this and it doesn't confuse them. But now that you have this set up where your countdown timer is going to go, just create three buttons. Let's go to insert and where do we go now? Illustrations, shapes. I like to choose a rounded rectangle, whatever you want. Choose one. Go ahead, do start timer and let's go choose a format say this one okay now maybe you want to change the size make it a little bigger get it looking exactly how you want it to look select it and copy paste it so now we have three buttons that all look the same and all we have to do right now is to change the text on them and then assign it a macro. So start timer, stop timer, reset timer. Okay, we need to make this dude a little bigger. So play with the formatting as much as you would like. And now what you have to do is to assign the macros. So just right click a button, go to assign macro, and make sure to download this workbook so you can get all of these macros. And in the second half of the tutorial, I will cover them and tell you what's going on inside each one of them. The names are pretty self-explanatory. So let's go to timer for start timer. Okay. Right click, assign macro, stop timer. Okay. Right click, reset timer, reset timer. Okay. And now, I can click start timer, stop timer, and reset timer. So if that's all you want and you want it to work at five minutes and you want three buttons just like that, then you're pretty much done. Download the workbook, copy and paste the macros, and you are good to go. But now let's cover the macros and I'll show you how this works, which will also help you to change this and adjust it for your situation. So hit Alt F11 on the keyboard to go to the VBA window. Let's go ahead and close this. We have a timer macro, stop timer macro, and a reset timer macro. Now, as I showed you before I assigned the macros, you can input the time by hand. This tutorial doesn't limit that in any way. However, when you have the timer 
for a user, you're probably going to want to protect that cell so they can't adjust it. So that's where reset timer comes in handy. So if you want to change the timer from 5 minutes to 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 1 hour or whatever you want, 30 seconds, go down to reset timer and just change it right here. Here you have hours, here you have minutes, and here you have seconds. And you must input it this way. It doesn't matter if you have the cell formatted as date time because Excel will see this and understand that it's a time. So it's not going to cause any problems. However, if it did, you could go ahead and surround this guy with time value just like we did right here. And make sure that this cell is set to the cell that's going to display the timer. But this doesn't actually control the timer starting or stopping or anything like that. Just basic input some data into a cell. So let's talk about how the actual timer macro works. Let's go up here to the timer macro. Now there are many ways to make a timer macro, but here I try to keep it as simple as possible. There are only four lines, and this has one goal. This macro here just removes one second from the timer every second. So when a second passes, a second is removed from the cell. This is what creates the timer, makes it work, makes everything happy. Now let's go through the macro, and actually what I'm going to do, this will make it a little bit easier to explain, is to remove this line from here and put it down here. Okay, it doesn't actually matter where I put this, but it'll make it easier to explain. So the first thing that we do in this macro is we're going to check if the cell equals zero. So you'll notice A1, whenever I talk about the cell here, it's always the cell that's going to display the timer. So here we check if the timer is zero, because if it's zero, then there's nothing more for this to do. It has finished its life. It's not useful anymore. So we just stop the macro. Timer is done. All is good. So that's what this does. It says if the cell that has the timer in it equals zero, then let's get out of the macro. It's a very simple way to do it, and it works great for this little timer example. So let me put a comment right here. Check if the timer is finished, and exit the macro if it is. Easy peasy. Now, if we get to this point down here, if we get to anywhere below this line, that means that the timer didn't get to zero. So we have work to do. And this is the line where we do all the work. So this line right here is where we remove one second from the timer. Now, you'll notice that I did not put dot value after these range references here. So I have range a one dot value. If you don't put dot value, it's just assumed that you meant dot value. So I could very well have just done this and done this and everything would be OK. It doesn't really matter. It's just a shorthand way to do it. So what we're doing here is we are saying, hey, I want to set the cell that has the timer in it equal to its current value minus one second. And we use the time value function to ensure that we are removing one second. So here I have one second in the format that we used for the reset timer. So hours, minutes, seconds within quotation marks inside the time value function. Time value function says convert this into a time that Excel can use as a time. Since this cell has a time in it, it just very simply removes one second from this cell. And then we put that new value into the same cell. So all we're doing is we are resetting the countdown timer cell to its current value minus one second. OK, so remove one second from the timer. The next thing is what controls how often this macro runs, because this particular macro, the timer macro, actually runs on a loop. So we get to the end of the macro, this application.onTime thing, which I'll mention in a moment, and that will rerun the timer macro. OK, well, how often would we like to rerun it? That's what the interval is for. So we create a variable, name it whatever you want, and then we want to set this equal to 
one second from right now. VBA has a great function called now, which is the current time. So to get one second ahead of right now, just add one second using the same format that we used for the previous line, time value with one second. So we add one second to the current time, so it's one second in the future. Technically, this would be something like the future time at which this macro should run. So change this if you want to change the interval. And now we go to application.onTime. Actually, let me write a note. Set when the macro should run again. Should be the same time value as the previous line. So this number here should always equal this number here. Now let's go to the bit that makes it run again, application.onTime, interval timer. Application.onTime is a really cool little thing. It allows you to say, hey, I want you to do something at a certain time. That's really all that it does. So we tell it what time we want it to do something. I want, I want you to do it at the interval right here. I want you to do it at the current time plus one second. So one second into the future, run it then. What do I want you to run? I want you to run the timer macro. That's all. Make this macro run again in one second. So you can see it's actually a rather simple concept. And the application.onTime is what allows us to avoid a lot of the complications, a lot of the complex stuff that you have to use in other timer-related macros. So we've got application.onTime, interval, timer, and it will just go and run this macro again, check if it equals zero or not, doesn't equal zero, go down here, remove one second, go down here, update the interval to be now plus one second, go down here, run the macro again, and we'll keep going and going until we get to zero or until we run stop timer. So stop timer is what allows us to stop the timer at any moment. And since we use application.onTime right here to initiate the timer or to keep it running, we can use that to stop it as well. So here we have application.onTime. And what I did in this case is here I've showed you two different ways essentially to write out the same thing in a macro. So here I have the name of the argument, then a colon and an equal sign, so earliest time and procedure and schedule. Up here, I did not use the argument name. So if I go to on time and hit space, you'll see all the arguments that you can use. Earliest time, procedure, latest time, and schedule. So if you just use them in order, especially if it's just a couple of the arguments at the start, then you don't need to put the argument name. There's really not much point in doing it. I could have put earliest time and procedure the same way that I did down here. It's really just up to you how you want to do it. So for the first part, this earliest time equals interval is exactly the same as this interval. And timer here, the same as this procedure equals timer. The only change here is schedule. By default, it's set to true, which is why we did not have to do anything with it up here. But here, I set schedule equal to false. So we're, what we're saying is just stop the timer. So I want you to stop running what? I want you to stop running this. And one thing that you may wonder is how can I use interval here? It hasn't been declared in the macro, so there should be nothing for interval. It's only up here and right here. Well, notice that at the very top up here, we have declared this variable as a public variable. That allows me to use it up here in timer, and then reuse it down here in stop timer. So if you do want to go ahead and change the variable name here from interval to whatever you want, make sure you go ahead and change it up here as well. And I will go ahead and add two notes now. Stop the timer macro from running. And let's say default time for the timer.
And that's pretty much all there is to this macro. So you can see it's relatively simple, but it does involve a few different steps that can seem or at least get kind of tricky. I'd say the only really tricky thing here is the application dot on time, but it is an awesome thing to learn how to use in Excel. And I really recommend playing around with it. So that's all for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.